Welcome back to Who Chose. So today I'll be discussing my puck system, which can be found in this video. So in case you're unfamiliar with the puck system, it's just a method that I invented to hold a plant in place in an NFT system without the use of neck cups. It also allows you to move from the germination of seeds to the propagation of seedlings in smaller pucks in this system that I'll show you how to build here through to full-size plants in an NFT system. I've had a lot of questions about the design of the pucks themselves uh, and what exact dimensions and thickness they are. So today we'll discuss how to make the perfect puck. Also, I'm going to discuss how you can move from a pre-existing net cup system into the puck system if you've already got uh, all your holes in your NFT drilled out and don't want to uh, make new ones. Let's do that. So the things we'll be using today, some various sized hole saws, which I'll get into in a second. We'll be using a drill. You also need your PVC piping, some scissors, a marker, and some EVA foam formats. Now, EVA stands for ethylene vinyl acetate, and it's considered non-toxic. It is not food safe, but when using it, we have to you know, put into perspective the fact that I can't find any net cups that are food safe either. And this is not being submerged at any point. It's also not coming into contact with any part of the plant that you'd eat other than, you know, a leak maybe, but you will be removing the outside of the leak anyway. So I'm fine with using this even though it's not food safe. And it actually says it's made for gardening as well. So if you have a problem with EVA, stop watching now. All right, now that all the contrarians are out of the room, whatever your hole size on your NFT, we can scale that to make the perfect puck. The perfect ratio for a puck is two to three. With my hole source, the closest ratio I could get to for a two to three was 64 millimeters and 90 millimeters. So to make the holes in your NFT system, if you're starting out from nothing, we'll drill a hole in our PVC rails. Starting forward, then reverse. All right. Now, because I'm, you know, not using this as an NFT rail, I'm not going to clean up the edges, uh, but you can just use some sandpaper to go around the edges uh, and take off uh, the plastic shavings. And you want to make sure that you keep at least one of these pieces. This piece is the key to making the perfect puck. So as I said earlier, you want to make the puck roughly one third larger than the hole that's in your NFT rail no matter what the size of the hole that's in your NFT rail. If it's a pre-existing cut hole, you can still make it that one third larger and it will hold in place well. Let's make those pucks. Now to make the pucks, you want to remove the center drill bit from your hole saw, which is just a matter of undoing the grub screw, removing the drill bit, doing the grub screw back up so that it doesn't get lost and then using this so that you have a nice clean circle rather than a drill hole through the middle. So originally when I cut my pucks, I did it on top of a milk carton because if I went too far through the EVA, uh, the soft plastic of the milk carton wouldn't grab too hard. So um, it wasn't too dangerous. Uh, I've yet to find a, a, you know, a perfectly safe way of doing it. I'm going to do it on a frame this time uh, where there's nothing underneath the EVA, but the frame holds the EVA sheet in place um, so that it doesn't 
take off as I cut the holes. If you have any suggestions of a safer way of doing this, please leave them in the comments below. I'm very open um, to a better way. Okay, now that we've got our circles cut in our EVA, we can mark out the sections we want to cut from the circles to make the T. So this is where this key piece comes in. If you lay this piece over the center of the puck, it will give you the size of the hole that the puck is fitting into. So on this piece, we're going to mark out a cross. So now that we've got a cross on our key piece, we can overlay that onto one of our pucks press the puck into the curvature, making sure that the key piece is in the center of the puck. And all it's a matter of doing is marking out the four points on the key piece onto the puck and cutting, making a direct line from the two ends of the cross out a square in the puck. So you don't even need to mark on the pucks. You can just use the key piece as a guide to cut out the notches in your pucks. And then all it's a matter of doing is taking your scissors and cutting your central line in your puck. And that gives you your perfect fit. How easy is that? So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. I hope it helped you either move from this to this or move directly to the puck system. And I hope it serves you well. I'll see you next time on Who Chose.